Hello and welcome back to Lynch Paints, where today Lynch will be showing you how to paint the Rebels from the Star Wars Legion Core box set. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so steps one and two would be of course to assemble your miniature and to base spray it in white, because of course we're going for this Hoth theme, so we're going to pick white. Now, step number three, we are going to look at the trousers first. Uh, so for this, I'm going to grab this uh, Storm Vermin Fur and then what we're going to do is that we're just going to take a medium sized brush, grab a bit there, water it down, just the touch, <laughs> and then we're going to paint his trousers in this darkish grey. I had a little look at some of the... Um, some like reference photos for these because there's, there's not many uh, not many people have actually painted them in this hot star they're, they're all in in the end all sort of colors of greens and browns very earthy tones um, there is the box of veterans and I believe that they are painted in whites and such but they, they've got like the, the big jackets and coats and things so they're already sort of modelled for that film, whereas these aren't. So yeah, I, I just kind of just used a bit of artistic license and thought, okay, so that's going to be that colour, that's got to be that one. So I'm just going to roll with it and see how it turns out. It should turn out pretty well. So as we're going to leave that to dry, I'm going to move over to move over to the weapon. Here's a rifle. And for that we're going to grab have it on black. Or the black of your choice. You don't have to use Citadel paints, you can use um, army paints, whatever takes your fancy. So we're just going to apply a nice layer onto this weapon. Um, it doesn't need much detailing. I had a, again, I had a little look at reference pictures and such for these mo models, and they're not even highlighted. So if you think that you can get away with not highlighting, then do it because it's going to save you quite a bit of time and time and effort. And again, these are just your standard troops, so they don't have to be as fully detailed as HQ choices if you don't want to. And if it's going to save you a bit of painting time and it means then your models will get onto the board quicker, then by all means, do that. So I'm just going to paint his binoculars as well. And then we're going to move on to the next step. So next step we are going to take some more fang brown and what we're going to do is that we're going to take a nice pointy medium sized brush, water down just slightly and then we're going to tackle his various belts Here. Uh, with the belt buckle, I think I might just do it silver. You can do it gold, you could do it um, maybe like red to signify different squads, or maybe have the cap that he has in different colours to signify different squads. So after I've done this, we will move on to washes. And this next step should really transform this model into your very, very basic um, minimum of three colours. Because I mean, if, if you really wanted to, you could fill it in 
um, like this. It all depends on how much how much love and time you want to put into these. So, I think put about there. Of course, yeah, it's backpack. Right. Anyway, um, I'm just going to finish up on the uh, straps, and then I'll see you over for the next step. So now we enter the wash stage, uh, slash contrast stage. It's going to be one of the easiest stages. I would recommend uh, if you can get maybe four or five models to this stage and then do a batch of them and wash them. And while they're drying, then work on the next five or however many you want to so split it up. But I'd, I'd recommend do it in, in batches of more than one model. Um, so, we're going to use some null oil, and this we're going to put on the trousers. And we want a nice medium sized brush. We want to focus, there you go, thank you very much camera. And we will plop it on. Just a good layer, you don't have to water it down. Because of course it is already very runny anyway. You don't really need to help it flow any better than you can do already. So that pretty much covers the trousers um, but we'll just do a little bit just on the leather work just a tad right in between these pieces here and um, So, next, we're moving on to, just give that a wash, um, bop, 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 bop. Contrast Skeleton Horde, and for this lovely bit of paint, we're going to do his backpack. And again, you know, you can you can do the backpack in whatever colour you like, really. Um, but I just found using this contrast paint really works very, very well on a, a white base. So I painted up like some skeletons before, and using this has just saved me so much time. And the way it comes out is absolutely fantastic. So again, just trying to get into the very edges. And you don't need much. Sweet. That's that. And then finally, the third one. The Pathogree White. Contrast. Again, give you want to give these all a good really good shake and still keep them with the same size brush stay open thank you we're gonna do everything that is white everything that is white this cloak pockets his shirt that's really nice Aha! There you go. And for this, you can be as liberal with it as you like. 
before you can use as much as you like. But you want to add a good layer. To the model. Um, there might be a little bit of bleeding, so you can kind of, don't know if you can see, just there where this contrast paint mixing with this one. And that's not a huge issue really. But if you think, oh no, it's, it's ruined my model, you can always go back with just a bit of white or a bit of cream, whichever it's bleeding into, but for in this instance, you grab a bit of white once it's dry, and then just, just tidy that area up there, with just a little bit of water down white. So I'm going to carry on with this, and then once everything's dry, I'm going to probably move on to some other details like a face and see if there's any areas that we need to tidy up I mean I've got a little bit there just on the hood where some of the brown crept its way across so I'll see you once this is dry Okie dokie, so now that that is dried, what we're going to do, we're just going to take some white scar and we will pick out just a couple of areas where the light's going to be hitting it. So we're thinking the top of the shoulder here, and the tops of the arms, and then we're just going to water, as I normally do, we're going to water down the paint and try and blend it in with the rest of it. Don't want to go too heavy on it. So it's going to take a little bit of time doing this. Don't want to rush it. Go around the back. And then it's just going to help just to, it's, it's kind of like a highlighting really. If you want to picture it like that. This is going to help just to make some of the areas stand out just that little bit more. Don't have to go too crazy with this, but at the end of the day, it's your model, it's your world, you can do what you like with it. So I will spend a little bit of time doing this and I will see you for the next step. Okie dokie. So what I've done is just that I've gone over just a couple of the areas with good old fashioned lead belcher. So I've done the buckle and just just a couple of little details just on his binoculars there. And then I've gone over his um, goggles with, where have they gone? with Corvus Black. I knew it wasn't Apple Black, but it was a slightly lighter black or darker grey. One of the two. Depends on your outlook. Um, so, I thought it would be kind of cool to get some Gilliman Blue Grey... Uh, uh, Gilliman Blue Glaze. Now, that's a bit of a tongue twister. And we're going to just take some of this and I'm going to pop it in the lens. Oh, yeah. And then I'm just going to dab some off my brush and try and use that to absorb just a bit in the middle. So then, when it dries, hopefully it should dry just like that. I just thought it'd be kind of fun just to experiment with that sort of thing just a little bit. Uh, one thing I did as well, just while I was waiting for all the washes and contrast paints to dry, is that I went over the base. So I just stuck a little bit of a, a, a chunky cork on, and then the rest of it I used one of my favourite paints, which is technical. Um, one one there ranges. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> so one of these, these, this paint is awesome. Um, and you just slap it on, and what it effectively is is just thick paint mixed with sand. Um, and then I get one of my really old knackered brushes, 
can just try and wedge it in as close as I can. If you do struggle to try and get it in sort of really close to the feet and you don't want it to overspill onto the model, then a toothpick's quite handy just to get into the real close up areas. So now that we've done that, I just realised I've overspilled on the Gilliman Glaze. I'm trying to tidy that up. And we're going to move on to the face next, so I'll see you in a moment. So, the face, the face, we're going to do the face. Um, I will admit that FFG have made some fantastic models. However, the, the faces, they're not quite as detailed as Games Workshop ones, so a, a point to them, I suppose. Um, but we're going to do our best. We're going to give it everything we've got. So, we're going to start out with rat skin flesh for a general sort of Caucasian skin tone. And we're going to water down a little bit and apply as such. Now, the reason why I say that the, the face isn't quite as detailed as Games Workshop ones. Um, will become apparent if you've painted one and then gone on to these faces. It's, it's mainly the eyes. It's mainly the eyes. Uh, the the moulds around them aren't quite as... Um, they're just not, not quite as detailed as the others, as the Games Workshop ones. So they're... The eyes tend to make or break model, in general terms. Um, so if if you do great on the skin and mess up on the eyes, it kind of lets the whole thing down. Um, but as I say, we're going to use some small brushes and we're going to try our best. And now we're going to mix in a bit of this, again, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, cream, a bit of cream. Have a little bit of that. Water down, mix this in with uh, a rat skin flesh. And then what we're wanting to do is just gradually just add in a little bit of the cream colour in each time and working in smaller and smaller areas. Um, so that's probably not enough really. Add in a bit more. Right, try again. That's a bit better. Actually see a difference this time, right. So I'm ignoring the eye sockets. And focusing on like the nose, cheekbones, that sort of thing. I'm just gonna add in a little bit more now. And then try not to rinse your brushes out each time because that will just help with the mix and with the blending as well. So again just working in smaller smaller areas until you're almost using entirely bleach bone. I'm going to call it bleach bone because that's what it used to be called and now it's yeah, that 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 name. <laughs> I swear they do it on purpose. Just to confuse and infuriate us. How oh, rude. Alright. So that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. I'm gonna try and feather it in a little bit. But again, just this step, take your time and just work a little bit at a time. And try not to rush it. I mean, there are a lot of faces. Um, to do with the rebels, but again, just take your time. 
go at your own pace. And paint primarily for yourself. Always paint for yourself. Unless you're being paid to paint for someone else, then paint for, <laughs> then paint for them. But ideally, just paint for you. Paint for towards the standard that you want, that you're happy with. And in the end, that's all that matters is making making ourselves happy. So now I'm gonna try and tackle the eyes. There's little two sunken holes where eyes should be. <laughs> um, so for that we're gonna grab some lovely Corvus Black and switch it up to a smaller brush. Again, we want to water these paints down because we want them to flow as smoothly as possible. Um, and I'm going to attempt to try and do some eyes and we'll be back in a moment. Okie dokie, now that that is done and out of the way with, we're going to move on to doing the base. So we're going to start out with our Administratum Grey, just like with the previous videos, uh, we are going to grab a bit of a rough looking brush. And what we're going to do is that we're just going to dry brush. Nice and simple. I have painted over the lump of cork that I had there with a slightly darker grey, just so it kind of matches or roughly matches the rest of the base. And then we're going to remove nearly all the paint off our brush. Start out with the rock, using nice light, quick movements. Just going to dry brush over the base just to pick out all the raised areas. It's a great method for highlighting as well if you've got sort of plated armour and you can't be bothered to individually paint each and every line. You can just dry brush and it creates the same sort of effect. But we're not doing armour at the minute, we're doing bases, so let's let's do this base. Let's do this rebel base. Cool, and you know what? I'm happy with that. So that's the base done. Wow. <laughs> Hold up. Not quite fully done just yet, my friends. No. Four. We're going to apply a bit of Valhalla Blizzard. Found it. So, tired old knacker brush, our snow brush. And we're going to get a good scoop. Obviously between <laughs> dry brushing and putting this on, give it a minute or two just to allow it to completely dry, but because of course we're dry brushing, there's not much paint going onto the base to start with, um, then it, it, it should be fine between when I finished it and after I ramble on for a little bit. Because um, if you were to put down the snow and the base is still drying, then the paint that you've put on is going to mix into the snow and you're going to end up with discoloured snow, which... It's no good, you don't eat that. We're just going to dollop a good chunk and then smush it around the base. Let's zoom in a little bit, that's better. Let's not hit the camera arm, <laughs> that would be great. Oh, I can tell I'm a novice. But making videos, that is. Not a painting. I'm just going to carry on with this. For a little bit. Finish off the base. So I'm just going to tidy up just by painting the rim black. And we'll be ready. So I'll see you in a moment. So here we have the finished result, a full squad of Rebels from the Star Wars Legion core box set painted in a Hoth theme. 
I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a like, share it around with your friends and subscribe if you are new. So this is the first set of videos looking at the Rebel side. I've already covered the Empire side of the box set so if you haven't already go check that out there should be a playlist um, sort of knocking about somewhere around here. Uh, I'll probably put a link for it in the description below. Also in the description you will find a link to my Instagram account at Lynch Paints where I will have stills and sort of work in progress pictures and a couple of reels and stuff of the Star Wars miniatures that I'm painting in the series as as well as um, other products that I've got, uh, projects that I've got going on at the minute from Games Workshop um, and other kind of little bits and pieces on there as well so if you haven't already go check me out over there and give me a follow that would be fantastic so if you wanted to pick up a box of these lovely rebels or even the entire core box set then look no further than Wayland Games they are a UK based retailer and they offer some amazing discounts and I do have an affiliate link of them of them for them down in the description below so if you want to you know snag some of these up and save a bit of money then click the link down below and a little bit does go towards me which helps to create more videos and it's it's just that little something it doesn't cost you any more and you're going to bother stuff anyway so why not click the link down below so with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time.